including the 3D printing and characterization and um, virtual cave and other facilities. It has been an interesting uh, visit. So professor also is, uh, uh, has published more than 100 papers in the international journals and about the same number in international conferences. So his areas of uh, uh, interest are additive manufacturing, so microforming, and also uh, modeling and numerical methods and tribology in uh, forming processes. Uh, so we are very glad to have Professor Dongbin V uh, with us uh, today. Uh, thank you, Professor, though it is around uh, 10.40 now in Australia. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, with the night. For accepting, yeah, thank you. Now I hand over uh, the remaining part of this uh, webinar to Professor Dongbin V. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Samuel, uh, for your introduction. Uh, I started to know your amazing uh, universities through your visit to UTS in 2018, I think. Uh, it was supported by the key uh, technology partnership uh, program between our two universities. Uh, since then, I can see the great achievements on IITM side. Uh, including uh, Professor Samuel's promotion and uh, the establishment of the Center of Excellence for Advanced Laser Manufacturing. Uh, and the rapid growth of this center, uh, even on the, the extremely tough situation during uh, COVID-19 in the last two years. So congratulations. Uh, on my side, a uh, news I like to uh, share is UTS has achieved its uh, highest ranking recently. Uh, now it's uh, the ninth in Australia. Uh, this is immediately after the group of eight uh, in Australia and the 137th in the QS World University ranking. 2023. Uh, this result was released a couple of days ago. Uh, it's a great honor to accept your uh, invitation to chair the fourth webinar held by your center. So as you introduced, uh, my research background is materials processing, uh, more specifically uh, metal forming, especially rolling, microforming, uh, tribology and interface behavior between tool and workpiece in forming processes. Uh, I do have some connections to the topics in today's uh, webinar. Uh, today's webinar hosts two excellent academics. The first speaker is uh, Dr. Ravi Bas. And the second speaker is Professor Abe Shama. Uh, each speaker will have 30 minutes to talk. According to uh, today's schedule, as mentioned by uh, Professor Samuel just now, the Q&A session will be uh, after the talk by the second speaker. So now uh, let me Introduce our first speaker, Dr. Ravi Bass. Uh, Dr. Bass is a scientist and the head of the Center for Laser Processing of Materials at International Advanced Research Center for Powered Metallurgy and New Materials in Hyderabad. Dr. Bass uh, specializes in the field of ultra fast laser mat interaction, uh, laser materials processing, micro nano fabrication, laser drilling, laser assisted machining and additive manufacturing. Uh, apart from developing applications and technologies for aerospace, automotive, power and biomedical sectors. He has authored more than 100 research papers for patents 
and uh, three book chapters. Uh, he received his master's degree and the PhD in physics, both from the University of Pune. In 2000, uh, sorry, in 1995 and 2000, respectively. He worked as a postdoc research at the University of Maryland, USA from 2000 to 2002 and a visiting scientist at the prestigious Harvard University, USA from 2009 to 2010. He's a recipient of Fast Track Young Scientists Award by Department of Science and Technology, India in 2003 and the Indo-US Research Fellowship awarded by the Indo-US Science and Technology Forum in 2008, starting the uh, 2009. Uh, Dr. Bass's talk is laser processing of materials from lab to industry. So welcome, Dr. Bass. Please, you are 20, uh, sorry, 30 minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Dongbin. Uh, can I share my presentation? Yes. Okay, I'm sharing my presentation. Yeah. Uh, is it visible? Yeah. Okay, good evening, all of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Professor Swamela and organizing team for giving me this, uh, inviting me and giving this opportunity to present our research at this uh, webinar. Today's my talk is on uh, laser processing of material, journey from lab to industry. In this talk, I will, I will focus on the uh, application developed at ARCI and also trans that transfer to industry. In this, I will also, uh, also uh, highlights the challenges we, we face during the transferring those technology to industry. So if you develop any technology at lab, it's not easy job to transfer to industry. There are a lot of challenges involved. So some challenges, some case studies I will discuss in my, this presentation. This is a plan of my talk. First, I will give a brief introduction of the laser, uh, laser processing of material. Then I will go few application develop at our center, like a laser drilling of arranging components, then laser cladding of power plant burner tip uh, plates, then laser surface texturing, then conformal cooling channels by additive manufacturing, and finally I will summarize my talk. Before going to my talk, this all now this uh, if you not all people know what is laser and this thing, I will not go in detail. Laser is nothing but light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And three main characteristics of laser, monochromatic, coherent, and highly directional, it's make a different from normal light. Other two uh, characteristics of laser, high intensity and short plus, it's make special for laser material processing. Now, laser available from ultraviolet wavelength to near visible uh, light, depend upon material of the uh, laging material. So laser we are using as a heat source and using for different application. For example, if you use heating just below the melting point, we can use for laser hardening and bending application. If you melt, if you have sufficient energy, if you melt, we can use welding, then alloying, as well as the cladding application. If you melt and vaporization, then we can use drilling, cutting. And if you vaporize, then we can use ablation, thin film deposition, then a cleaning and uh, a micro machining kind of application, material report. Uh, the laser processing of material is also depend upon, uh, it's also uh, depend on the wavelength, what we use. For example, if you see here, uh, uh, optical absorption spectra of the different material, you will see in the CO2 laser case, CO2 wavelength is 10.64 uh, micrometer. So in that case, most of material, for example, aluminum, copper, and this is very high absorption. For example, cutting of the 
cutting of the copper uh, copper and aluminum is very challenging with CO2 laser why so due to less absorption but it can easily cut steel and other material so for that uh, now next generation people uh, lasers are coming into UV are visible range to get to more absorption and better uh, cutting or uh, processing performance now, why laser for material processing? There are a lot of source available, but why laser? Laser is non-contact process, so there is no tool wear. Also, there is no any mechanical load on the uh, works, uh, uh, work surface. And if it's, laser is very localized, precise uh, uh, heating source. So minimum heat deposition, and we, we can do the selective material reward where we want without damaging the substrate or sub-substrate. Sub Second, there is no need of any post-processing. So most of uh, conventional uh, processing need a lot of post-processing after you do the operation. And laser, one can use the wide range of material we can handle for metal, ceramic, polymer, semiconductor, soft or uh, hard material also, one can proceed with the same laser. And other advantage of laser is high processing speed. This is needed for, uh, for production kind of application industry, look for high productivity. So high speed is important with high precision and high resolution is a, another one uh, laser can do. And laser is a environmental friendly. There is no any uh, chemicals or solvent involved and is a flexible process. So laser one can integrate with CNC, robo or any uh, uh, workstation. So it's very flexible. So we can do the very complex component of processing. So coming to the laser processing uh, material, if you see the marketplace from uh, uh, 1986 start and is that time market is only uh, uh, only 150 uh, million, but uh, now uh, 2020 it's really goes uh, increase up to uh, 5.6 billion. So more than 27 uh, compound annual growth rate is there. If you compare with the conventional processing, only 3.5% uh, growth rate. And in this uh, uh, laser processing, this laser cutting is uh, more uh, dominant and more mature. So more than 40, 42% is uh, market is uh, laser cutting and then laser welding and then other applications. So laser cutting is it shows is a, a more mature technology and people now using laser cutting for most of metal or now paper and other material cuttings. So coming to our center, center for laser processing of material is a unique center in India is having high power industrial laser. Uh, laser we are having all kind of laser. So our uh, our mandate is promote and provide laser based technology and solution to industrial application. So we are having 10 kilowatts, 10 kilowatt and 6 kilowatt to uh, diode uh, laser with uh, fiber couple. And that laser we are mainly using for laser cladding, laser surface uh, treatment and uh, laser uh, uh, braiding application. Then we also have pulse laser. Power is only 400 watt, but peak power up to 20 kilowatt. This laser mainly we are using for uh, drilling or uh, hole drilling application. Then we also have 3.5 kilowatt CO2 laser. Mainly we are using for welding application and hybrid welding. We also have ultra fast laser. Mainly we are using for uh, uh, micro and nano fabrication. Recently we also in you know, IDT manufacturing is the laser based and electron beam IDT manufacturing facility. Also we are having in our center. So our research area focus on laser surface engineering is nothing but hardening, cladding, and allowing repair and reclamation also we are working. Then laser based joining, we are autogenous welding, hybrid welding, and laser braging. Then micro machining, we are working on texture inscribing and patterning. Machining, drilling, and also recently we are in laser assisted machining. We are using laser as a heat source and uh, machine, hard to machine material, and additive manufacturing powder bed fusion we are having. So some of the application I'm showing here develop at Airshare. In joining, we develop uh, multi-material joining, dissimilar material joining, then thick section joining up to uh, 15 mm thick section uh, nickel-based superall and steel material joining we show. 
then some of the strategic sector application also we uh, demonstrated then micro welding also we we have pulse laser so we can use that for micro welding application so we welded where uh, this is the one uh, uh, automatic component saw sensor to uh, flywheel then lithium ion battery welding we are doing also we develop application like a tailor welded blank building of thick to thin section for automotive application in laser cladding also several application we develop few application i will discuss in my talk and also laser cladding we can use for repair kind of application some of the application you can see here this is the repair of a cylinder head so one of the automotive engine component is a cast iron so that we repair laser drilling we develop the drilling technology for aero engine application you can see here few application we also do also some some of the micro machine application laser hardening we develop application for automotive camshaft for power blade application then this hamming bed bed and other application so coming to first my case study is the laser drilling of engine components laser drilling is nothing but material removal by melt ejection and uh, uh, vaporization so if you drill hole so you can see the such kind of feature you can see you can cannot see the cylindrical hole so what is it you can see this spatter recast layer then draws and one of the uh, feature you can see in a laser drilling is a barreling is a in between you can see the diameter is increased so this only happen in laser case due to multiple reflection uh, from wall of the uh, 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 hole and uh, is a conical hole so taper it will come so you can see here some of the uh, cross section of the uh, holes and after that uh, we have to what you call see the hole diameter taper Uh, whole says pattern formation recast layer heat affected zone micro trapping and barreling if this thing for this uh, engine application we use a layer structure is having a nickel based super alloy coated with the thermal barrier coated in between also have a, a top coat is a vitreous stable zirconia is a uh, no uh, is a bond coat in between is a bond coat is a nickel chromium aluminum alloy it will give the interface between the Uh, nickel based super alloy as well as the uh, iterate stable edge zirconia and different coating thickness we use for this studies uh, some of the application is having such kind of thickness so same thickness we use for our study and laser parameter we use for uh, laser pulse energy from um, 2 2.5 to 30 joule pulse width we vary from 0.4 to 3 millisecond repetition rate up to 50 hertz and we also check the focal, focal lens different focal lens axis gas during drilling it's also help when if you use some axis gas it help to what you call remove the material more effectively and their pressure and different angles some of the actual uh, uh, component need a drilling in uh, different uh, incline uh, incidents so this is the our results if you see here a uh, diameter hole diameter with the pulse width if you vary the pulse width diameter also varies increasing this is nothing but your interaction time is increased so diameter it will increase and same time if you vary the power power density as a diameter as a power increases diameter is increases but if you in case of uh, power density uh, less than 0.2 watt per micrometer uh, more than 2 2 watt per micrometer square is a more vaporization is happening so material removal is more uh, more uh, linear but if you power density is uh, less material in, uh, removal is due to melt melt friction is more so if you melt friction is more then it's not linear so you can see here this uh, difference you can see is the non linearity of the curve so if you cross section the hole you can see here in a, a low power what is happening due to high cooling rate you can see the micro cracks in the uh, so super alloy case and so, this some of the delamination also but in high power case so you are removing that material with vaporization so you can get very uh, there is no Uh, recast layers very less recast layer so you can see uh, micro cracking in the uh, uh, metal part 
We also study the effect of gas, acid gas. If you use a inert gas, so you can see this is the inert gas uh, uh, whole diameter as a power density, and this one is the blue one is the uh, oxygen as a acid gas. If you use oxygen, it gives the uh, exothermic reaction. So due to extra energy, whole diameter is high, but oxidation also coming more. So your uh, surface wall get oxidized also, but it gives the oxygen gives the extra energy exothermic reaction. So your whole diameter is more. So if you use a pressure also different pressure. If you high if you use high pressure, so one can remove effectively melt uh, melt from the whole whole. So you can see here uh, as the uh, uh, pressure is increased, whole diameter is decreased due to we are removing effectively the material and that heat not goes into substrate. And also your uh, 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 exit diameter is also coming approaching to the uh, outer diameter. So what is happening here, taper is decreasing, more conical hole is coming. So we also use a hole for a different uh, uh, inclination angle, but inclination angle, what is happening? Your ceramic is also like, it's a ceramic is a metal stone, so it's flowing down to the metallic part. You can see here, and other uh, other uh, challenge is coming. Micro crack is coming, and also some of the micro cracks is coming in the uh, base material. So we have to optimize parameter in such way that so ceramic should not be most of ceramic. If you remove most of ceramic, we have to remove should not flow down the metallic part and avoid this uh, uh, delamination. So. Based on that, we use uh, our parameter and build the actual component is called high pressure nozzle guided, uh, nozzle guided vein, so HP, NGV, and we drill a different kind of holes. There's a front hole, then backside holes, then south segment. The, this diameter varies from uh, 0.3 to 0.4, uh, 300 to 400 micrometer, and this south uh, side varies from uh, 0.8 to 1 mm diameter. So different diameter and thickness area coming from 1 mm to up to 5 mm thickness. So after successfully of that component, we drill the different arranging component like a combustion liner is having thermal thermal barrier coating. It's called a yeah, inner liner, and this is uh, outer liner and inner liner is having thermal barrier coating. And this uh, uh, liner, outer liner, has a 12,000 holes and diameter lead 0.5 mm. So laser, one pulse, you can drill one hole. For example, my laser, I can drill uh, most effectively this such kind of hole, 50 holes in a second. So very fast, we can drill holes. So this component we drill without delaminating the uh, thermal barrier coating. So five engine component we drill, actual engine component supply to uh, this uh, industry and for their test and it's uh, also uh, pass the, their uh, uh, validation or uh, all uh, uh, test. And now uh, this is the, they have their production. Basically. Apart from that, different component also we drill that deflector plate, uh, 300 folds, 0.5 mm diameter, this uh, uh, high pressure NGV also we drill, for, but uh, this NGV is having three NGV to one. So uh, here I want to express, if you want to drill such kind of thing, you can see here my laser went inside actually. We have to drill uh, this uh, 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 outer, uh, uh, this uh, combustion liner from inside the liner. So we put laser, you can see here my laser head is going inside and drilling hole. And this inner liner we are drilling from outside, from PVC side. So we have to modify accordingly. We have to make some picture and modify and uh, drill such kind of thing. So summary of this, my distinct is uh, the hole quality significantly influenced by laser power density and pulse duration. No mechanical or chemical effect of the type of acid gas on the drilling of PVC and super alloy. And we use a uh, uh, acid gas pressure is increasing fold diameter and decreasing the taper. And inclusion drilling without delamination, we also demonstrated and successfully drill the shroud segment and uh, uh, this HPNGV as well as the 
uh, liner also. Now, coming to second uh, application we develop at our center. This is the laser cladding for power plant boiler kits. So if you see in, uh, in India, we have uh, coal based uh, power plant and their coal, our coal is a different kind of coals uh, in India. And if you, that this is a burner up uh, power plant. If you uh, supply uh, coal through this uh, nozzle, a lot of erosion is happening. So you can see that that plate get er eroded. So what here we want to develop coating in, in such way that, that one can avoid the erosion. And so in this uniform distribution of hard particle is needed and strong interface between the, your hard particle and matrix is needed. And this you can give the, it should be fine microstructure, give the good toughness also is needed for such kind of application. So we use a laser cladding. So laser cladding is nothing but material deposition. One can deposit by, uh, this is a, uh, by off axis and this is a coaxial. So you can see here one video. So you can get the idea how laser cladding is happening. So laser cladding advantage is that you can deposit from 200 micron to 6 mm width. We can vary as well as the height. We can do 100 micron to 2 mm height. That can is possible. And if you want to large area deposition, we can do the overlapping of the track. And uh, for uh, if you want the uh, it is a is a connected to six axis robo, so we can do the three D also. And here deposition rate is up to one point five kg per hour. That high deposition rate is possible. And you can see here this deposition. So here uh, you can see the melting of the powder, but your base substrate is uh, not heated that much. So you can touch uh, during uh, processing also. So that's the advantage of laser. One can very precisely what you call put the heat input into work face. Yeah, this is for only to show the demonstration one patch we deposited and we are showing here. So after this, you can see uh, this only the deposited part is only having a red hot, but other part uh, after this you can see is the room temperature. Uh, Dr. Pace, we have about uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So coming to this, uh, we use uh, for this hard uh, ceramic coating, use a uh, uh, tungsten carbide particle in a metal material is nickel chromium boron silicon matrix. And also in this case, what we observe if you use the continuous laser is uh, uh, degrading the uh, tungsten carbide particle. So we use a pulse uh, laser with a different uh, pulse duration without the uh, deteriorating uh, tungsten carbide particle. You can see here 10 millisecond pulse. And we observe if you use a, a CW laser, you can see here, uh, uh, the or uh, this uh, dilution and porosity you can see the more dilution in the uh, continuous laser of power is a uh, 1.5 kilowatt and this is a 1 kilowatt and this is a uh, pulse laser at uh, 1 kilowatt power uh, is a uh, low you can see very low dilution but uh, little uh, porosity is there so also if you see the uh, text and carbide part uh, particle uh, retention in uh, CW laser 1.5 kilowatt, very low, but in uh, uh, pulse uh, laser, you can get the more retains of the uh, particle. Based on that, we did the erosion test, and you can see here 35% uh, less weight loss in the pulse laser uh, parameter case. So, that we use for actual component. You can see the actual component is very big 400 mm by 500 mm. So, here, so one pattern is not essential. So we have to uh, work on the different pattern strategy to avoid the distortion and uh, uh, wrapping and delamination. For that, we use, uh, this is the photograph of the, uh, we put that actual component in the 500 watt thermal power plant at the symmetry in 
uh, Andhra Pradesh. And you can see after 1.15 uh, months that our laser cladding uh, plate is intact, but without laser cladding is wear out. You can see here, but without wearing it, also distortion is other plate is also uh, this thing. This case, only one plate we uh, put, but in uh, uh, 2020, February, we put uh, this uh, uh, Faruka, NTPC Faruka plant, completely burner tip, and that burner tip still is uh, uh, running. So this differential energy, uh, means, for example, uh, ceramic uh, give the uh, best means 10 millisecond pulse give uh, without uh, deteriorating a uh, uh, tungsten carbide particle. We can uh, 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 use a pulse laser, pulse, uh, do a pulse laser for the uh, uh, say ceramic uh, coating. Then uh, ultrafast laser. So ultrafast laser we are having here uh, uh, this uh, ultrafast laser. Our Pulse duration we can vary from picosecond, uh, 50 picosecond to 100 uh, femtosecond, as well as the nanosecond also laser possible. And in same work station, we can get the four different wavelengths: 800 nanometer, 400 nanometer, uh, 266 nanometer, and 527 nanometer also is possible in same work station. So uh, this ultrafast laser is a non-thermal uh, uh, interaction. So there is no thermal uh, uh, thermal uh, effect coming into the uh, substrate. So uh, that pulse duration is less than uh, electron phonon uh, relaxation time. So there is no heat goes into material. So that's the advantage of uh, ultrafast laser. So no, no thermal damage. Also ultrafast laser, we, we are having very high intensity. So is a uh, Evelyn dependent. So any material we can process, we can process the uh, glass also due to nonlinear interaction. Also, we can get the sub-micron sub, uh, sub feature in ultrafast laser. So we can do the micro nano higher structure also possible using the uh, femtosecond laser and identical laser. So this laser we use for the laser surface texturing application. We did uh, this application develop for automotive uh, component is called a piston ring and cylinder liner. The laser texturing is the nothing but dimple, cross edges, and grooves kind of thing. So what is the use of that? It gives the hydronic bearing effect. If you move to uh, this thing, it will give the hydronic uh, pressure. Also, this dimple act as a wear particle uh, debris, debris trap. If you move uh, two particles, third body abrasion is uh, very severe. So if you have such kind of feature, so it traps the debris. And other advantage of uh, laser surface texturing is that uh, it's give the lubrication reserv reservoir. So it uh, acts as a lubrication re reservoir. So using our laser, we study the different uh, uh, texture uh, uh, patterns and morphology. So you can see here uh, uh, the dimples, then uh, ellipse, uh, grooves, and cross hatches. And we also study on the uh, this on the uh, cylinder liner, and you can see here uh, effect of the laser surface texture density on the uh, uh, different uh, the texture density on the uh, friction and wear. So those result we did on the actual component, and we did the engine test, and engine test so very good uh, promising result uh, reduction in the uh, lubrication oil consumption by 16 percent also. Uh, low friction and low wear. So this ultrafast laser. So coming to other application is uh, our uh, this additive manufacturing is we use for confirm cooling channel for the uh, pressure die casting uh, pins. So you can see here is a core pin. Generally, pressure die casting. If you want to make a hollow structure, you, you have to insert something. If you insert now at present, they are inserting hollow uh, solid pin. If you insert solid pin, there is a lot of distortion and uh, heat uh, distortion is coming, and that profile is not uh, what you call hollow profile is not good. But if you use a, a confirm a cooling channel pin, you can do the cooling effectively and we can get the very good shape. This we already did, and you can see here with an without pin also we validated, and uh, temperature is very, very less. Uh, we maintain the less than 100 degrees Celsius. 
the this uh, thin temperature due to confirm a cooling channel so we reduce a, a heat pack and soldering pack to uh, reduce the number of pores also uh, size of the pores and cooling is a faster and uh, uh, this uh, life of the pore pin has also increased so in our laser based additive manufacturing so we are not having only system so we are having peripheral also so laser based additive manufacturing you need the design for additive manufacturing then uh, this uh, additive manufacturing system post processing so we are having uh, one of the uh, unique facilities for hot isostatic press and uh, also vacuum furnaces so that uh, is needed for uh, are in the of additive manufacturing also we are having a inert gas atomizer so we can make our own powders and that powder we we, we are using for uh, r and d of uh, additive manufacturing and you can see a different component we uh, develop using our additive manufacturing so coming to my final summary laser is a intense and precise heat source offer any advantage to process processing of material for drilling joining surface engineering additive manufacturing and micro machining and our center center for laser material processing developed more than hundreds application in the last two and a half decade and pro promoted uh, use of laser in indian industry so i would like like to acknowledge my colleagues uh, students at the clpm arc as well as the collaborator i have a lot of collaborators and also funding agency to support uh, uh, this research and thank you Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Base, for your very uh, interesting and comprehensive talk. Uh, it was like a lecture covering uh, quite some interesting applications of uh, laser materials processing. Uh, for the audience, please uh, prepare your questions for Dr. Base uh, to ask after the uh, second talk. Uh, now, Next, let me introduce uh, our Professor Abe uh, Sharma. Uh, Professor Abe Sharma comes from KU Leuven in Belgium. Uh, before joining KU Leuven, he was a faculty member at IIT Hyderabad. Uh, he was awarded his PhD from IIT uh, Ruki. Professor Sharma was a visiting scholar at uh, Purdue University in USA and Osaka University in Japan. He has a uh, teaching and research experience in the design, analysis, and uh, optimization of manufacturing processes. Uh, Professor Sharma's current focus is process design for large scale, multi-material, multi-process additive manufacturing. He has published over 100 uh, papers in international journals and conferences and uh, several book chapters. Uh, Professor Sharma was granted national and international awards and fellowships, including uh, JRG REC Visiting Research Fellowship from Osaka University. Uh, the best PhD guidance by the International Institute of Welding through its India uh, subsidiary. National Doctorate Fellowship by the Government of India Teaching Excellence Award by RIT Hyderabad. Uh, today, Professor Abe Sharma's talk is about laser arc hybrid additive manufacturing, bead formation, and the multi bead overlapping model. Uh, welcome, Professor Sharma. Your turn. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh... Uh, I'll, I'll share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, okay, let, let me start. Uh, greetings to everyone around the corner of the world uh, for this webinar. Uh, first of all, Professor Vey, uh, thank you very much for having such a nice introduction about me. Uh, and uh, Professor Samuel and his team for organizing this event and continuous efforts in uh, making uh, laser material processing uh, familiar to people who are interested in the subject. And uh, I also thank Professor Avivathi because giving such a nice introduction about the material processing and you are always having a privilege to have someone uh, who is, who is uh, opening you uh, in such a nice manner so you, I can start it directly on my subject. Uh, today, I'll talk a little bit about uh, laser arc hybrid additive manufacturing and particular thing which we are going to discuss a little bit is how bead forms and how we can use this process in additive manufacturing. Uh, uh, simply, uh, we have here is a laser arc hybrid process. We have a laser head and then we have a mag that is metal inert gas welding. Source and we know that certain materials has have good buildability with the uh, conventional arc welding process. Certain materials have good buildability with laser processes. Uh, at the same point of times, there are some materials where they they are not weldable even with laser, either laser or make uh, or, or welding process or arc welding process. However, there is a, a very interesting case where we can use laser and uh, welding process, arc welding process as a hybrid. Uh, either lead the arc is leading or the laser is leading and in order to make uh, something weldable. Uh, some special class of those materials which are weldable laser arc hybrid, if we wish to bring those in the gambit of uh, additive manufacturing, perhaps we have to look into the process of our hybrid uh, additive man manufacturing. So in this today's discussion, what I'm going to do is uh, basically four small sections will be there. Uh, we'll take something, I uh, will look into the background of additive manufacturing and DED to make our case. As first we'll uh, have certain discussion about bead models and overlapping bead models, which is essential for a kind of a DED additive manufacturing process. Then uh, we'll uh, see something about laser arc hybrid processes, how arc and laser interacts and how does uh, this interaction affect the, the deposition process. Then we will venture into a little bit in mathematics and see that what is the shape and size of a bead particularly de deposited by laser arc hybrid and then see how we can we can use that for additive manufacturing. And in the end, we will uh, try to see a few uh, cases where we can say uh, uh, the way ahead uh, in multi-material uh, DED using laser and other processes. Let's go for the first part of our discussion. Just to have an uh, just to have a small discussion about additive manufacturing, and when we are seeing this additive manufacturing, uh, so uh, in that case, we 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 are very this is a kind of very uh, kind of a hot a buzzword these days that additive manufacturing everything is being additively manufactured, but. In fact, this particular process is having its own uh, manufacturing prehistory. For example, 1864, one of the patent was uh, granted for, uh, for, for photo sculpture where multiple cameras were put uh, surrounding a person and then 3D data was uh, generated to, to develop a statue. Or for that reason, 1925, and the welding was used to, to produce some decorative articles. Uh, the only thing that everything there was at this point of time was uh, manual. With due course of time, we have a lot of developments, and with this, with this uh, developments, we have seen many things in the modern additive manufacturing. What we are seeing today, now we are at the stage of 2022, and we can say we are venturing into the next generation of additive manufacturing. And where we are today, uh, although additive manufacturing is here for a long, but uh, very recently, we can say the the manufacture additive manufacturing process have been standardized or classified into seven uh, processes like extrusion, metal jetting, binder jetting, sheet metal, uh, wet polymerization, and the last two powder wet fusion and directed energy deposition. The last two are important for us or significant for us because if we are discussing about the metal deposition and particularly direct energy deposition, which is what we are going to discuss today. In case of DED, what we do, we have got a source and we have got a feeding system. Feeding system is feeding powder or wire and source, heat source is heating. And, and we deposit the material and the way we 
move the torch, we can have different geometries. Uh, the three most, most common um, uh, processes which are uh, currently being used for uh, laser, uh, for, for, for DED is laser-based uh, processes or electron beam processes, as Professor Bathe was also mentioning. And, and one of those uh, DED processes is uh, arc-directed energy deposition, which is basically an extension of welding process. Uh, and in, in comparison to other processes like laser or electron beam, we can say the arc-directed energy deposition is quite uh, handy in the sense because we have quite a good background in welding uh, years and years, and it is it becomes very easy for us to convert a welding power source to a to a additive manufacturing head. Uh, maybe plasma welding, maybe MIG welding, maybe mag welding. Different processes we can use, uh, and commonly the arc welding is uh, when we use it for for deposition. Uh, we can use say it's a wire arc additive manufacturing. Uh, the point what we can note here is the deposition rates are quite high and uh, we can develop or we can deposit medium to large components and when we say medium to large components we are talking about meters we are talking about two meters to or one meter or five meters even and as i said earlier mainly mag or the plasma deposition processes are used for this uh, process if we a little bit go further into uh, the nitty-gritty of this process, we can say that uh, we have we, we have a wire feeder or a powder, and the heat source is there, which is melting and depositing the material. Eventually, this material deposits in form of if, if we are depositing in a deposition direction, we we deposit a kind of a weld bead, and if you see a cross section of the weld bead, there is a particular shape there, and externally we can say it has got height and width and a shape. Uh, now, if this bead, if we are having one bead and if we deposit another bead on that uh, and another bead on that and another bead on that, we have a single pass multi-layer component or wall type of component. Or with this bead, if we deposit side by side, side by side adjoining, then we can have a layer. And if layer of layer, if we multi-pass multi-layer, we can create a block. So having said that, the bead, which becomes a very important or significant uh, constituent of uh, DD process because its shape and size determine how much torch will move between the passes or between the layer and all your programming will depend on that. Not only the programming or uh, is is uh, decided by uh, by the weld bead shape. That means the path planning for AM. We can also say that we have other things like uh, process parameter it's themselves. We need to, we have to have uh, through bead geometry because if we we want to have a certain height, we need to fix the process parameter. Uh, based on the chosen parameter and the conditions what we are using, uh, the bead will decide the dimensional accuracy. For example, if I have a bead which is deposited at a higher interpass temperature, I will have kind of a rough or uh, lateral surfaces. And if that is the case, the post machining will increase. So in a way, the constant bead decides so many things for, uh, and or basically we can say that it, the process starts with a kind of a understanding of a bead. Having said that, uh, and having said that, uh, the bead is so important, then we need to know the shape and size of the bead, uh, not only for programming point of view, but in order to deposit materials and without having any voids or gap at the interface, we need to know the volume also and how about the shape. This particular shape of the bead, what we can say a bead model. Bead model, basically, it's a mathematical representation or analytical representation of a bead shape and then if we have this in 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 in, in uh, uh, with us we can we can we can not only design a part but we can also design the process in terms of path planning or other things so how how does a bead or well bead looks like a cross section of bead in general typical bad bead models uh, which are available to us for for example gas metal process or plasma deposition we have parabolic shapes cosine shape or circular sector and for different materials and different uh, process conditions, researchers or uh, have used different kind of a cross section, but most commonly a uh, parabola, which which represent a kind of a shape of very well represent the shape of the GMA delve that is gas metal arc welding bead shape. Uh, that is good, but at the same point of time, when we are talking about laser and arc hybrid, we 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 are not uh, aware of. We are aware of, but. Uh, we are not aware in the context of deposition what will happen to the shape of the bead. Uh, the first question, simple question, is whether the same parabolic or either cosine or circular sector fits into the cross section of the laser arc hybrid bead, and then we can use it for, for further uh, planning for additive manufacturing. 
Uh, we will we'll see those effects, what laser and arc in interaction does to the bead shape. Uh, prior to that, I'll take a couple of uh, more minutes to you that uh, how this bead shape will further be used in case of additive manufacturing uh, or DED-based additive manufacturing. Uh, this is the block or a multi-layer, multi, uh, multi-pass, multi-layer block we have already seen. And we can now easily visualize that if we deposit a pass one or a bead one and adjoining bead two and bead three, uh, then we can generate, we can, we can have a surface as such. Now we need to have the surface as smooth as possible because one surface with the one layer or the top layer of, of uh, top surface of the layer will act as a substrate for the next uh, layer. So for that reason, we need to have the placement of beads side by side at a certain distance, which we call offset distance. Now, we see that if the offset distance is something which is that which is very small, that means the beads are very nearby, then there may be a chance that in place of flat surface, we can have a kind of hill, uh, hill type of structure. Or if they are too far, we can easily visualize that it will be having a kind of valley type of structure. So that means that the bead should be placed side by side at a fixed or a specific distance. And this distance is, we can say, optimal of offset distance. And it should, which should attain, should attain, my point is should attain because uh, a flat surface in a multi-pass, uh, but necessarily whether it will be having a, having a flat surface or not, that we'll have to see when we uh, go further. So with this, we have a kind of a background of uh, offsetting. Now, a little bit more, we'll talk about the, the, the offsetting and then we'll venture into the process. Uh, there are basically two models which are available to us, uh, like flat top overlapping model, what it, what it considers. It considers, uh, for example, uh, the volume of uh, overlapping area and the volume of the valley. That is, uh, we can say triangle ABC and triangle ADE. This is the first diagram uh, which, is, which is showing this. If they are equal, we can say that uh, we can say that there will be a flat surface. And if you do a small math and small geometrical calculation and for a parabolic bead, we can easily find out that this S, that is S star or S strict, I should say, optimal offset difference is a two third of the weld width. However, uh, this is not the case in actual practice. What is observed is that the weld bead is not always flat and it may not be flat because we have deposited the first layer, it is solidified. Now, when we are depositing a side, adjoining side, uh, the second bead, the material will flow from second bead to the first side, first bead. And uh, it will, whether it will rise to the peak of the first bead, no, it will not. But yeah, we know that the material which will flow from the from second bead to, towards the first bead will have a kind of a tangential pathway to the second bead because it is a source. So what we can say that on, along with the volume balance, if we say that the DE, which is tangent to the, to the second bead, uh, that condition should also be there. And eventually we will have a kind of a, not exactly flat surface, but optimally flat surface, which will not be 100% flat. Having this consideration in uh, these two consider considerations, if we take into account and mix a little bit of maths with a parabolic bead shape, this it will be 0.73 W. The optimal distance comes out to be 0.73 W. Uh, here, there's a point to remember that if we change the shape, uh, bead shape, uh, this numbers may change or will change 0.66W, maybe something else. If we even consider the flat top overlapping model or a tangent overlapping model, that will also change. Uh, if if my, 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 my parent bead fits very well in parabolic, these results may, be, may, may sound good, at, particularly for the processes like GMAW, which is well tested for this kind of a model. Now, having this background on the particular uh, the bead model and the overlapping uh, bead model, we now can venture into the our next part. Uh, that is uh, how we can implement this. So implementation is, is kind of a kind and kind of a uh, flow chart. We can see that we have to experiment with the process, develop the bead profile model, see which kind of a geometric shape it fits in and then fit a curve in that and then develop overlapping model. Uh, offset distance 0.66W or 0.73W. For an example, if it is a parabolic in shape, uh, we can say that and we can deposit uh, the layers and see that whether a flat surface we can achieve or not, or most likely it is supposed to be. Okay, uh, when we have done this, the second part comes uh, about the laser process. If we do a laser arc hybrid process, and particularly the case laser is leading here in this case and preheating the uh, material, and, and then had, uh, and helping us to, to, to deposit the material. 
So in this particular case, uh, whether the parabolic shape or whether the overlapping model, which are existing, whether they whether they are applicable or not, that is the moot point. That is the question we have to answer. So uh, this is a kind of a recent work of ours, uh, which was published. And uh, uh, the more details about the process can be found in the given, given, given uh, citation, uh, given the uh, reference. Uh, basically what has been done here, the, the MAG process and CO2 laser and MAG hybrid process is there with the argon CO2 as the shielding gas. Uh, apply to HT780 class material uh, with a nickel chrome moly titanium type of wire. And what has been done here in this case, the travel speed of the torch, both the torches, which, which should be same, uh, the, the current of the, the, the welding uh, current, that is MAC current, and the laser power and the distance between layer, laser and arc are, are varied. And the uh, effect of these things on the formation of bead uh, is, is, is uh, first evaluated and then that particular information is used in developing the model. Uh, now what happens, this is a fundamental effect which we know about the, uh, the laser, that keyhole effect. Uh, just to uh, see that what keyhole will do in case of laser arc hybrid welding, in case of arc welding, we know that when the, when the, from a pillar wire, if the material uh, uh, is transferred in form of a uh, droplet, uh, hits upon the, the melt pool and a kind of a revert uh, back and the revert, and then it can also have a kind of in extreme condition comes and may come out in form of a spatter. However, in case of laser arc, uh, what the laser does, uh, though it, it may not be participating in the melting fully, but at the same point of time, melting of the wire, that means uh, it is creating a keyhole effect. And because of this keyhole effect along the keyhole, the droplet uh, transfers uh, to, the, to the bottom of, 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 the, of the pool, and then it reverts and then goes side by. So what will happen, this can have at least two effects. We can see a finger type penetration we can see, and we can also see that there should be a widening of the bead. That means the width may increase. The finger type penetration, per perhaps we, know, we, we do not require for, uh, art, for, for additive manufacturing here in this case, but the width will have a kind of a thing which we are interested in. Though we can choose, choose the parameter in such a manner that, that the finger penetration is, uh, is, is avoided. The second effect which we can see here is uh, laser wire interaction. Generally, we see that the laser, we, we believe that if the, or we think like that, if the laser is near to the, to the, the wire, which is a uh, welding wire, it will help in melting. But the idea is, or the, 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 the reality is something different. What actually a laser is doing, laser is preheating the wire. And because of that increasing, it's uh, reducing its resistance. And because of that, uh, its uh, melting rate reduces. So the laser is widening the bead, but at the same point of time, it, if laser is a little bit far away from the electron uh, electrode uh, wire, then it will it will help in uh, increasing the deposition rate. Uh, that is what similar. That is what exactly we can see in this this picture. The the top one shows that how the laser power when it is increased, uh, the the width increases. The reason, as we have said, that material flow is the reason. And we can also see if the laser arc distance is increased, the, the area that is the uh, deposited area further increases. It, it, it looks like a little bit same, but if we minutely observe, there is a difference. And in certain cases, this difference can further go, which is quite reasonable. Uh, if, so we can say that the laser has got an impact on the material flow and the bead shape. And if that is the case, if you see what, will, what it will uh, do. Uh, the normal processes, what we have got, we can see that they are they are very well represented by a kind of a parabolic shape. Uh, but if we compare, if we try to fit this parabola shape to a laser uh, arc hybrid bead, what we are saying it deviates. It deviates is in such a manner that uh, this, the top surface is kind of a, uh, depressed, and then it, it, we can understand the material is being pushed downwards and the sidewards. Basically, we have a kind of a deviation from the parabolic shape, which is quite well applicable to the processes like uh, gas metal arc welding uh, deposition. Having said that, now we have a background to, to, to venture more into the, into the topic that whether uh, we need to develop a new bead model and if it is so, how it will uh, reflect our on, on, on the, the overlapping bead model. Having said that, uh, this is the third portion which we are seeing that uh, in which we are going to see that how a new bead model is required and how it will affect the overlapping bead model. Uh, so we, we, as we have seen, that number of experiments were carried out, and there was a norm, there was a common phenomenon what we what was observed that there was a kind of a 
depression of the surface compared to the parabolic shape when we are depositing a laser arc hybrid. And interestingly, when we try to analyze this deviation, we can say that most in all, in all the cases, it is a kind of a variation which is very less uh, at the edges uh, if, it put, if it is compared with the parabolic shape and it, it grows. So this shape looks like to us a kind of a mathematical model or uh, can we fit into that? So having intuitively what we tried that, uh, that let's have a kind of a parabola and, 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 and uh, uh, deduce a kind of a, uh, this depression effect from the parabola to find the shape. And what is that? That is what a composite function, what we have a parabolic shape minus a, a, a function of psi x that is the B depression. And this we considered based on the shape intuitively what we are seeing for number of samples that let it be a unimodal function with a, a characteristic coefficient C0, alpha, and beta. Uh, and now the values of C0, alpha, and beta can be found by inverse modeling for different specimens what we have. And lots of specimens uh, we tried and then, then some of them we are being shown here. Uh, when we analyze the, the, these uh, coefficient C0, alpha, and beta, or indices alpha, beta, and coefficient C0, it is something uh, uh, interesting that alpha, betas, and particularly betas are very much uh, in the same, are uh, almost same range or very narrow range when we are uh, having different kind of a, uh, what you call well beat. Uh, prior to that, let's see that uh, the model, what, what we are trying to fit, fits very well to boast all the shapes uh, what we are having. Uh, and of course, these three constants, additional constants are giving us the flexibility to fit in the well. And quite, quite in certain cases, this deviation, which is quite significant, maybe 25% uh, of, of the total well volume, uh, if we use the parabolic, uh, conventional parabolic shape. Having seen this, uh, the next observation when the alpha, beta, which are coming in very narrow range, so we can say that, can we standardize them? Yes, we try to do, do that and just do the inverse modeling in such a manner that all the specimen what we were having in hand have same alpha, beta and the C0 for every sample because is a specific. And we could find that, yes, we can very well fit the standard curve where all the specimen for this particular material and this particular gas and Y combination have the same alpha beta value and then c naught becomes the sole representative of the depression effect uh, which is there because of the laser art interaction so having this model in in hand uh, the next step is of course to find an overlapping bead model and we have the same approach fom that is uh, an ntom model as we have seen earlier however we are finding a difference little bit more of mathematics and, uh, because now the shape basic shape has changed so some calculations are changed and then you have got a kind of a not so difficult, but you can find it find a new uh, uh, new equation or new expression for offset uh, optimal uh, offset distance in form of c naught alpha beta or a gamma function of alpha beta, basically shown in red here, which is basically effect of coupling of laser with R. Here we are seeing that uh, compared to the com conventional parabolic model, our offset distance has reduced a little bit. Uh, and this reduction depends on the C0, which is which we have seen depends on, uh, which, which is basically a representation of shape change in bead uh, surface as a shape, uh, and that represent the variation in process parameters as well. But still, we are not sure that whether this model will fit or not. So what we try to do, we try to do the TO model. And again, though it looks like a, like, a, like a kind of a parabola here, but what we have used is basically a composite model, what we have developed. Here, there are two conditions. As we know, we have already seen the condition for tangents, uh, BC, that means tangent coming from the second plane uh, to, uh, from the second beat to the first beat. And of course, we have got a volume balance. Uh, however, the integral of this particular equation becomes a little bit complicated and we couldn't find an analytical solution for a simultaneous solution for these two equations. So for that reason, we have gone for a kind of numerical uh, solution where we are solving both the equation and trying to find that where their uh, roots uh, or their solution uh, merges. By doing so, now we are having a kind of a uh, results for the TOM uh, based offset distance as well. And we have seen that we have the FOM based results also. And this all depends on C0 and C0 is process dependent. That's why it is not a no more a fixed value like 0 0.66 or 0 0.73 as we have seen earlier. So the crux of the matter is that what we have to choose whether FOM prescribed or DM prescribed. 
in order to mitigate or in order to resolve this issue, what we have done, we have uh, in this work, different samples were deposited at different offset distances and see uh, which of these offset distance make as flat as possible or make optimal flat surface. So having having one side the experimental uh, data with the with with process condition, which we're offering as a flat surface, and other side, we are having two FOM and TOM based prediction. And when we compare that, we find that all the samples, which all the conditions which were giving us the flat surface, which were lying between FOM and TOM, sometimes extremely at TOM, sometimes the, the, the offset distance prescribed by FOM, but they are not going beyond that. So now we have got a kind of a conclusion that offset distance in the laser arc hybrid additive manufacturing is a kind of a dynamic parameter that depends on process condition. And it is unlike the previous study where we assume a, we find a parabolic shear fitting in all type of the weld beads and then find a fixed value. So this is a very important invest, important results from, from this, this particular case, although it makes our life a little bit difficult because every time we have a new material and new process, we have to uh, find a new kind of a uh, beat representative model, but it is worth doing when we do not have the other processes like GMAW, which have which doesn't uh, which do not uh, offer uh, trial to deposition or the weldable uh, material uh, for in a, in a certain case. Having said that, uh, I'll, I'll because we have limited time, maybe three or four minutes left. I will I will uh, complete this task to just having an. Uh, small discussion about how further on the bead model side uh, what we can go do. So there are def definitely different ways we can we can think of a couple of or few of things what we are doing just like to share with you. Uh, the, the material what we used earlier was uh, or up to this point of time around the world only single material is being used for uh, deposition and for that we do have the model available. Now the question arises if we have to have a uh, biometallic deposition and and then it becomes interesting uh, if there was a single material we have got material bead one and bead two both are identical in size now if we have to program multi-material as we are seeing material a and material b having a, having a biometallic wall one layer or another uh, to, to to have this wall we have to deposit first two beads of same height but the materials are different and if we control this height the widths will be different because the materials behave differently so in that case, first of all, the multi-material approach becomes we have the bead one, we have bead two, two different bead profile models, and then algorithmically we have to find a set of H uh, and W1 and W2, or set of W1 and W2, which gives similar H or same H. And then we have to find this and apply to a multi-material overlapping model and then find the offset distance. Uh, it becomes a little bit a double of a task, even it becomes a little more than that, but it's worth doing. I will show some of the uh, results, initial results on this. And uh, you can see that there are different uh, specimens are there and some of them are ticked with the green where we are using the FOM model and TO model for multi-material case. And we are seeing that although all of them are uh, prescribed by the, by the corresponding model as a ops, uh, the offset, the optimal offset distance, but it is not happening all the time. That means a spatial or a specific set of heights can, are only uh, possible to provide us uh, a kind of a bead uh, or flight bead what we have. Uh, the, this is still in under, this research is still under progress and in, in time to come, I'll, we will be able to show uh, you some different, uh, some interesting results. Uh, another two aspects which I would like to share with you about, for example, which we are seeing in a in, in a practical cases we are doing, or or, or uh, beads which are not symmetric. We need to have tilt the torch sometime, or we to use uh, twin wire, for example, torch which gives a kind of a asymmetric bead. So the bead models available to date are primarily for symmetric bead, but in case if if it is torch is tilted, asymmetric beads are happening. If we are doing multi-material. Then we have to tilt the torch towards one material to balance the heat, or or uh, or even further metallurgically balance the 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 this process. Uh, in that case, there is a chance of asymmetric bead. And if it, that is the case, we have to have new models here. In this case, we I'm showing uh, the 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 model is uh, bipolynomial model, uh, wherein two different curves are being used for the left hand or right hand side, and they are merged, and then uh, the bead shape, and then further it has it has its own TOM and FOM model. Uh, the last thing, uh, which is something which is something the industry is also uh, looking for or which may be interesting, 
not only asymmetric bead totally if i do have a process which is creating a totally a bead shape which is uh, which we can't solve uh, analytically uh, this is not an additive manufacturing case but this is a case of laser arc uh, hybrid left pillar uh, bead but the bead formation here has been uh, difficult for an analytical model to predict and there n we have discretized the shape and then after discretization we have lots of data and in that case and in that case we have got a kind of a lots of a large data set and if that is the case a neural network model can be trained and we can have also the soft computational model for prediction of bead shapes so this is a possibility which we, which a couple of publications are available but this something this is something uh, definitely going to grow when we need to develop so many process variant and materials for so many materials so this was a kind of a, a small a discussion on laser arc hybrid uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, and with this, I would like to uh, summarize this uh, presentation. And we can see that new technologies and process arcs processes are available for additively manufacturing materials. And, and for that reason, we need to have process and material specific bead and overlapping bead models. And of course, when we talk about the hybrid process like laser or, or, or laser arc, hybrid laser has significant role, though may not be fully responsible for melting, but it changes the shape and the size of the weld bead, which eventually affect the deposition process when we talk about the additive manufacturing. And eventually, we are venturing somewhere in machine learning based bead models where we have a kind of a where we would be able to address a very complex shapes that might not be uh resolved by analytical method uh at this on this date with that uh, i will end my uh presentation at the end i will thank uh carl Lewin as well as joining in welding research institute osaka university this particular work on a laser arc hybrid welding was in collaboration with jwri uh thank you very much and uh, now i hand over again uh, to professor Wei. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sharma. Uh, this is a very focused um, uh, talk. Um, I can see you have already generated quite some uh, very good publications uh, based on this uh, topic. Uh, okay, now I think we have uh, some minutes for Q and A. And uh, okay, here uh, firstly. Uh, Rajiv Kumar, please, your question. Please, Rajiv Kumar, you are mute. Uh, Rajiv, I have enabled you. You can uh, speak now. Rajiv, you are mute. Uh, Rajiv, you can even type your question in the chat box if you can't uh, uh, speak. Okay, let me uh, firstly, let me check uh, the Q and A here. Okay, uh, I think uh, here a question is for Professor Sharma. Uh, okay, uh, do you have any uh, postdoc opportunities <laughs> from a student? I think uh, perhaps this would not be the this one right platform to answer this. But yes, of course, uh, my email ID is there on the first slide, uh, uh, and you can contact me. And if there is a kind of mutual interest will see that yes that's the best way i think uh the second uh, question i think uh, is for dr base uh, how can additive manufacturing help in a semiconductor foundry process and is there someone in india working on su uh, xuv free electron laser based uh, lithography In a semiconductor, actually, there are very few work in additive manufacturing. In India, so far, uh, few people are working on uh, uh, 
DLP, uh, uh, DLP technique to use a, a DLP on a, a chip, a component on chip kind of thing they are working on this thing. Uh, but it's only R&D level and few, I think government also initiated uh, some funding for uh, semiconductor or uh, photonic material also in India. Uh, Pre-electron laser or pre that, I don't have any information. So might be, I think, uh, Professor Sharma may know uh, more detail. No, I, sorry, I also do not have a particular or specific information about this uh, case. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Janik, Janaki, please ask your question. Uh, thank you, Professor. Is it audible? Yeah. Am I yes, audible? It's, yes, it's audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, first, I would like to thank for your uh, very, very good, interesting uh, session. I think uh, both the speakers I know. Professor Abhay Sharma, I think you, rem you, you recognized yeah. me, right? Yeah. I'm from Ethiopia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Professor Ravi sir, I think I met uh, you in the yes, office. Yes. Yeah. In the RCA. So currently, I'm still in Ethiopia working as a director for the Center for Manufacturing Engineering. And Good. thank you very much, sir, for your session. But mm -hmm. I have only two questions. Mm -hmm. Because I am a solid state uh, welding uh, specialist, mm -hmm. why I should go for laser welding? Uh, what is the... Because now the laser welding, almost uh, people are not interested towards the laser. So now why should I prefer? Okay. So it's like a research question. Aspect. Yes, sir. Yeah, laser welding is one of the big advantage. You can get the very localized process. So you can do the very precisely welding. For example, and tip penetration is the other advantage. And third advantage is the processing speed. You can get very high processing speed. So still, as you say, is still in R&D level. It takes some time to go yes. into the industry. And, and so you are so yes. my, my micro welding laser is very precisely so you can weld uh, for example now lithium ion batteries so people are using in production also laser in lithium ion battery welding so their heat input is very much important very precisely heat, heat input is needed without damaging your cell you have to weld and sir uh, most of the facilities I have seen in ARCA. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly speaking, most of our Indian students don't know those facilities, sir. Please yeah. advertise your uh, ARC because it was very impressive. I really, uh, the lab was very good. Many researchers doesn't know what is going in the ARC. And, yeah. sir, what type of software you use, sir, for simulation, for the cladding aspect or for this uh, building aspect? Yeah, actually, we are uh, experimental people. So for uh, modeling okay, and uh, this thing, we depend on our collaborator. We have collaboration with IIT Chennai as well as the IIT Hyderabad. So we use their facility for modeling. We have here a very small group on modeling, but those working on some different area. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank and uh, my another question to Professor Abhay Sharma, sir. Sir, you developed some uh, mathematical uh, equation. Uh, can't we use it for the different materials? You, you told uh, it is only for specific material at this moment. So, but once the governing equation is developed, I think we can implement for all the materials what I guess. Uh, so, that is the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that is that is quite true because this is a data-driven model, or you can say the basic model is there, but we are calibrating the model uh, coefficients or characteristic coefficients with help of experimental data. So it becomes a kind of a material specific model. Uh, however, it would be interesting to not only a material, but within the material also, uh, we, can, we, can, we can see that, for example, if in place of argon CO2, if I use another shielding gas, the dragging effect may change. Then we have to see yeah. that what will happen to the C0 value. 
So within a material also or within, within the variety of the group of material, further research needs to be done because this is a, one of the first kind of work. Uh, and we need to establish that uh, really we need to uh, go into a little bit more mathematics or a uh, simple uh, available result of two third of W or two th width or, or 0.73 of uh, width is sufficient. Uh, so as of now, I can say it's a material specific. In future, we will come to know that how much standardized we, model we can have uh, for laser arc welding process. But yeah, lots of investigations are required for that. Yeah, because it's, it's like a layer by layer arrangement. Yeah, I think some uh, complicated integration modules definitely uh, may come into picture. Because mm, casting are, process, we cannot compare. Yeah, there are there are so many. Sorry, sir, I'm, I'm using the desktop. That's why I'm able to show my face. Okay. In uh, Ethiopia, national exams are going on, so they are not allowing mobile and laptop inside the campus. Okay. So that's why. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for, for the chance. And really enjoyed these lectures. Thank you very much, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, here, a question is for Dr. Bates. Any views on atomic, uh, atomic uh, level reactions and controls while using uh, thermal uh, factor, uh, second laser irritation? Yes, very good question. Actually, using a femtosecond laser, we can go, we call a two photon or multi photon absorption. So we can do the in atomic level uh, uh, processing also is possible. So, but we have to do it in a heavy, very controlled uh, manner. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is for Professor Sharma. Which additive manufacturing process is best for laser arc? Uh, it's a difficult uh, question to answer because there is a, a process and material uh, relation always exists. Some materials are weldable by a given process, other may not be A. Uh, for example, if I have to use the plasma process or if I have to use GMAW process, it depends upon kind of material what I'm using. Uh, so uh, it, it will be a kind of a risk to generalize this, uh, but yes, uh, how, we can, how we can resolve this issue, uh, particularly of, uh, about the using uh, wire-based processes, uh, because it, they are coming from the welding process and welding has got a long history uh, of, so we know about the weld weldability of the materials, what process and the material combinations are weldable. So it becomes a quite of easy task for us to go back and search for this particular material and the process combination, whether they were working for arc welding or not. If they were working for arc welding, there is a highly likely a chance that they will work for uh, this process also. However, there is a kind of a, so many things which we need to see because even for that matter, uh, the multi pass welding which was not which is not used uh, uh, for, for all the time uh, that with those results if we are having them further it, it will help us because if we have a thick plate and we are depositing multiple passes there in a kind of a pressure vessels application or piping application those results can be useful however uh, with a kind of a uh, remark that uh, the type of cooling what we are having because of the body of the workpiece in the welding and type of deposition what we are having in case of uh, uh, the generating surface, there may be difference. So uh, my in crux, I would like to say we do have the initial conditions in hand. We have to match the boundary conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we are running off, uh, running out of our time, but um, uh, may I spend uh, two minutes to talk about uh, uh, why ARC uh, additive manufacturing uh, this is for a question for Professor Sharma. Uh, at UTS, we are starting two topics. One is ultrasonic uh, additive manufacturing. Yeah. And this one, yes, this one, uh, I think you know, is actually a plastic deformation and tribology uh, based. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah, of course, laser uh, processing can be used for in this uh, technology because yes. in this technology we need to uh, machining actually yeah 
uh, this is one of the topic, but I'm not going to talk too much about this. Uh, another thing is about while arc additive manufacturing, uh, you yeah. are uh, conducting uh, a lot of research here. Yeah. Uh, this one has attracted significant research from all aspects in recent years. Yeah. Uh, it seems this one is one of a few feasible uh, processes uh, that is suitable for uh, fabricating large size component additively. True. Uh, but uh, we know uh, this uh, process still needs a lot of uh, improvements. And I believe hybrid may be the only solution, at least uh, at this moment, uh, uh, based on the uh, development of this process. So this uh, hybrid uh, uh, process can be a hybrid uh, uh, of process such, such as um, uh, welding and uh, machining. I uh, found that you had one publication uh, about uh, uh, machinability of uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, WA, uh, uh, WAM workpiece. Right. Um, yeah, it can also be a hybrid of uh, uh, energy inputs, uh, such as uh, your talk today. It's, uh, it's uh, a mixture of uh, uh, welding, electrical energy, and uh, laser energy. Uh, so I like to under, uh, uh, understand um, actually at this moment, so what we are uh, doing is to uh, introduce uh, hot deformation in solid or semi-solid uh, state. The purpose is for reducing defects and improving mechanical properties of warm uh, yeah. workpiece. Yeah. So I like to know your opinion about the future development of warm because yeah, this is a very interesting uh, topic and probably probably one of few yeah you know feasible. A process for large component. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Vey, for this question. And this is quite relevant question. And in fact, uh, the what you said about uh, uh, the hybridization, I think the future lies there only uh, because, for example, if we talk about uh, a DD or different type of DDs also, and they do have a different deposition rates. If you're talking about different deposition rates, that means the volumetric deposition uh, also is, is changing for ex for that very reason suppose in a in a, in a very um, crude way to say that uh, i i am seeing that uh, the the large the large portion of the large structure is done by wam and the and and the finishing is coming either by a kind of machining or it is coming by the hot uh, processing as you suggested or it is yeah. coming by further deposition to fill those irregularities, yeah. right? So in a way, we can say a cladding also. So in a way, the idea is idea is that uh, to if we are, have to machine it, ma minimize the machining. If we have to hot roll it, we have to control the surface in such a manner that the uh, the hot rolling doesn't require such such a plastic deformation. That means plastic deformation is sufficient enough to not only mechanical uh, development of mechanical property or enhancement of mechanical property, but at the same point of time, they are creating uh, uh, a smooth enough surface that requires uh, that doesn't require further processing or uh, or least processing. So somewhere I can I can see that uh, uh, that that uh, the hybridization of process will bring in uh, resource efficiency in the process where we have to have we have to waste least amount of material in uh, post-processing rather than the post-processing will be there for improvement of properties or surface properties. So uh, that is what definitely uh, I, I can uh, see, at least from uh, my, my limited perspective, I can see those things are definitely be there. Either either uh, uh, hybridization, I think, is the, is the key, whether the heat source to heat source side hybridization or to manufacturing processes, they are, they are, they are definitely be there, I think. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I missed the uh, one a question uh, just now. I think this will be the last question in this um, uh, workshop. Okay, so this question is for Professor Sharma. Can we have control real time uh, heat input for multi material for having uniform deposition? Very interesting question. Very challenging question. Uh, challenging answer to say. Uh, not uh, because even for that matter, single material controlling of the heat input. Uh, uh, even if we are able to do that, uh, whether it will resolve the problem, we don't know. The reason being, uh, uh, the geometry or the volume itself is developing. When I'm when I'm depositing the first layer, the heat conduction is there from the substrate. But as as we are keep on depositing layers, right, the convection comes into picture. So the 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 heat uh, cooling effect is is also so dynamic. Uh, so. I do not have direct answer to that, but in one of uh, my previous work, what we have tried to do is to uh, simulate, uh, through simulation, we try to find an answer for, for this control and how it is that, the, what we try to do that the thermal model, a simple CFD, a simple control volume method uh, based the thermal prediction and the related to the hardness. And by doing the, some process changes, if we can see that hardness of the section is managed or uniform or relatively uniform, we can say the heat input was taken care of one way or another way. So at this point of time, uh, it will take some time in my opinion when we will be reaching to some condition where we will have a, such a control of heat input that uh, everything is taken care of. And particularly to take that knowledge to further level of multi-material, I, I still see that it is a, we have to wait and we have to put efforts in this direction. Um, the community uh, is, I think, working on this and definitely in the next few years, we will have answer to this. Okay, thank you very much, um, Dr. Bass and Professor Sharma. Uh, now I think I can hand over to Professor Samuel. Yeah, pro, um, yeah. Thank you, Professor Dongbin. Uh, Professor Fani Kumar, you have anything to comment? Oh, no, no. I was very happy to listen to the lectures. I enjoyed being part. That's thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, it has been a, a wonderful time, and it was very informative. Uh, thank you uh, very much. So now I take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Professor Dongbin V for uh, taking time, though it is uh, late in the night, and then strictly controlling the time. So that is actually a, a big task, but you have maintained the time very well. And thank you for make it, uh, more, uh, making it more interactive and interesting. Thank you, Professor Dongbin V. So I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Ravi Bhathe, so for giving insights into the uh, hardware which is available and also the processes which are being carried out. So many times, so they do modeling, but here a real work is being uh, done. So thank you, uh, Professor. So probably as uh, uh, Janikiram Luzer has uh, suggested, we need to make the people to know there are several uh, facilities here, right? Even in IIT, there are so many facilities, but students and other community doesn't understand. So that is the reason why uh, now we have these kind of a webinars. Uh, so hope uh, this is being informative. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Bhatte. Uh, thank you, Professor Ravi Sharma, uh, so for uh, taking this time to share from KU Leuven. So I think it's uh, becoming evening there. So thank you yes, yes. very much for all the insights, both uh, modeling and also uh, the hardware which you have developed. Uh, thank you very much. So we also thank all the panelists, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Janaki Ramlu and uh, Professor Fani and other people who have been uh, helping us. So as you all know, uh, these webinars are being conducted as a uh, part of uh, proposed uh, Center of Excellences which have been established in IIT Madras through the funding of uh, Central Government of India. So they have recognized IIT Madras as one of the institution of eminence. So it is called IOE, so institution of eminence. And uh, with that help of the funding, we have been able to uh, 
develop these kind of facilities and they have opened this uh, forum to all the people to assimilate the knowledge and then to uh, give out to the people. So man, there are many students, uh, faculty, industry people who have been taking part in this. So I also would like to thank the Global Engineering, that is the international office, uh, so the uh, dean and the whole team, so who facilitated this one. So we'd also like to thank uh, our director, former director, uh, Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, so during whose period uh, these uh, COEs have been initiated and uh, current director, Professor Kamakoti, uh, for making all these things possible. And also I'd like to thank our team has been working hard uh, behind the scenes uh, for making this uh, possible. Uh, so our students are there in all parts now. Uh, so Australia, Japan, US and other countries. So they are joined from there. So we'd like to uh, thank them all. Uh, uh, for joining. And also Professor uh, Surinder Maria was there from Nantes, uh, Paris, France. We'd also would like to thank, we'd also thank uh, all our core members of our team and helping us uh, in carrying out all these uh, research activities. So we'd like to thank all the participants and uh, those who actually asked the questions and made this thing uh, very interesting. So thank you all. Have a good evening and good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very Good much. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Yeah, Jeshirin. Yes, sir. I'll stop recording. Yeah. Stop recording. Yeah.